So we have ethene to give you ethanol. So this is our unknown value and we're going to call it delta H. Now we are given the values of enthalpy change of formation. So we're going to write the elements in the standard state on this line over here. So we have carbon as a solid and hydrogen as a gas and oxygen as a gas. So next thing you need to do is balance this equation with either the reactant side or the product side. So the whole Hess's law equation is balanced. So if we look at the reactant side, we know we have two carbons on this side, so we put it to that. And then we've got six hydrogens on this side, so we put a three there. And then you've got one oxygen on this side, so we put a half there. It's exactly the same as what you have over here. Now, these are the elements in their standard state, and they're forming ethanol, and they're forming ethene and water. So the arrow needs to go from this line and points up to ethanol. And then the second arrow also points upwards to ethene and water. So this represents the enthalpy change of formation of ethanol. I'm just going to label this as one. Now one thing you need to remember is that if there's more than one mole of ethanol, you need to multiply the value that you're given by the number of moles. Because the um, and by definition the enthalpy change of formation is for one mole of ethanol. So this side represents the enthalpy change of formation of ethene and so I'm going to call this two. Now we need to find two routes around the reaction that where the arrows do not oppose each other. So if I show you that first, so this arrow and this arrow do not oppose each other, they're going in the same direction. And then this arrow just do that again. Then we're left with this arrow, which again doesn't oppose anything. So the two roots around your reaction are this one over here, which is the elements in the standard state first form ethene and water, which then goes to form ethanol. And the second root is the elements in the standard states directly form ethanol. So this I'm going to call as root 1 and this I'm going to call as root 2. So Hess's law states that root 1 is equal to root 2. So root 1 is this delta HF over here. So it's this delta HF over here. So I'm going to write delta HF1 is equal to, and then for root 2, I have this delta HF and this delta HF. Sorry, let me put that in. So it's delta HF2 plus delta HF. So delta HR is a unknown value, so we're just going to rearrange this equation. So we write this as delta HR is equal to delta HF 1 minus delta HF 2. And that should give you the value for delta HR. So I hope this has helped you to understand how you would calculate the enthalpy change of a reaction from the enthalpy changes of formation. If you have any questions or you have any comments or you need to ask me anything, please use the comments box below and I look forward to hearing from you.